Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I want to thank you and the ranking member for holding this important hearing, and Mr. Chairman, for your continued focus on this. Uh, Washington and Alaska, I would say Washington, Alaska, Oregon, and California, Hawaii are all very united in our concern over the economic impacts that tsunami debris can have to our region. Our state, uh, Washington State's coastal economy, produces $10.8 billion in economic activity, and it supports over 165,000 jobs. So anything that threatens that coastal economy uh, is something we're going to pay a lot of attention to. So we're here today to talk about how we're going to get a response from NOAA on what is this threat, the measurement of the threat, and what the response plan is to that threat. A few short weeks ago, we just marked the one-year anniversary of the devastating tsunami in Japan. And the people of Washington State, because of our connection with Japan, have a great sense of loss. And we remember those people who have lost their lives. Seeing that devastation when the waters rolled back and we saw what happened shocked many people, not just in America, but around the world. And so it has become very clear to us what an unbelievable economic damage can happen and what can be at risk. So for our commercial and recreational fishing and our vessel construction of ships, our tourism, our thriving ecosystem, we all want to know what the plan is. So, Mr. Chairman, I feel like you do, that we aren't getting the answers that we need. I would like to submit a statement from the mayor of the city of Long Beach. He, he reflects a unique and staggering concern about what tsunami debris can do to his community, and he wants to know what the plan is. Mr. P Mr. Chairman, we also had, in this just last few weeks, uh, an incident in Washington state where a uh, crab Crabber vessel was sunk, and now oil leaking from that vessel is threatening the shellfish industry in our state. So it doesn't take a lot to imagine what would happen if the response plan is just, we will sink it. Uh, we need something much more elaborate to understand and stop this debris before it actually reaches our shores. That's what we want to see, and that's what we're hoping to get from a response plan today. It's very important that the resources are there to mobilize the emergency research funds from the uh, RAPID program, the National Science Foundation RAPID program, which would give scientists the tools that they need to analyze and to tell us about this uh, likely debris uh, chart and where it will go and what areas it will impact. We also want to make sure that this science is available to other scientists in the Northwest. It's almost as if there's an attitude that the tsunami debris is top secret and we can't get the information. It shouldn't be this way. The information and data, the best guess scenario, should be available to everyone and all communities so that they can plan. We would hope that once that information is made available, that that would be part of an action plan that then could be implemented by the Coast Guard, by NOAA, but certainly would give those communities the sense that they can plan for what this likely impact could be. We know that not every plan is going to be carried out in the detail that it was originally proposed, but having no plan or not understanding what the plan is or just counseling people individually doesn't give the people of Washington State the certainty and predictability that they would like to see. Many people said we wouldn't see any of this impact till 2013 or 2014. And now ships and motorcycle and this various debris is showing up and people want answers. So Mr. Chairman, I look forward to the witnesses being here today. I know that they play a role and it's not, uh, it's not all on their shoulders. But we certainly, this senator is going to continue to push until NOAA responds in the appropriate way of giving our coastal communities the answers that they deserve. I thank the chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, Mr. Kennedy, uh, Dr. Libchenko was here in March, and she said, quote, it's not clear that the tsunami debris is going to have any kind of devastate, is going to have a devastating impact by any stretch of the imagination. So is that NOAA's view? Is that still Noah's view? <laughs> um, I think uh, the, the jury's still out. Um, it, we have been doing uh, a, a tremendous amount of work uh, trying to locate 
any of the debris that would be in the ocean in, in where we have projected, uh, modeling has projected that that debris would be. Uh, in my testimony, uh, I mentioned that we've been uh, every possible venue to try and find debris, um, including uh, a lot of uh, looking with high resolution satellite imagery in quadrants where the models say the debris should be. We haven't been able to find any debris. Uh, that's not to say it's not there. It's not to say we're not still looking. But uh, I think the, the concern is not overreacting right now. Um, we know that there are places where there's more debris um, uh, ashore. We've seen that in, in Alaska. Uh, but we've been out there uh, with our partners trying to identify that debris specifically as from the tsunami. And for the most part, we haven't been able to do that. And so we know there's increased debris here and there. We've not been able to find it at sea. We know we had 1.5 million tons that went in the water. How much of that gets to the other end? So I don't think we want to get overly uh, alarming with anyone in that we're, we're continuing not to have any evidence of a major debris out there in the ocean that's gonna come ashore. So. That's, I think, more the thinking than that it's not an issue because if 1.5 million tons of debris comes ashore on our coasts, that's going to be a problem. We know that. Well, well, Mr. Kennedy, I'm definitely going to react when thousands of cans of hazardous materials wa wash ashore and they have things like rat poisoning and gas in them. We are going to react. Mm -hmm. So that has happened. And... So the notion that uh, you said earlier to Senator Begich is that we don't have a clue about the debris. And so I've heard what you just said. So have we uh, gotten all the information from DOD about the satellite imaging and information we need? Have, we, have you requested it from NOAA? Have they responded and given it to you? Or is there more data and information that, that should be being made available? We started with uh, commercial and, and uh, uh, available satellite imagery that we had, but we have progressively gone. Uh, I mentioned the uh, uh, NGA. We've progressively gone to other types of uh, uh, imagery, including classified, and are continuing to have discussions for further classified uh, uh, satellite imagery. So we're working down that path, and we have begun to get classified imagery, and we're using it. In fact, we're using it to look in several quadrants right now to find debris. Um, have we done every uh, satellite out there that may be generating imagery? I don't think so, but we're having some discussions about how we get to that next level right now. Uh, and by the way, um, we, I'm certainly not suggesting that uh, debris won't come ashore and that some of that may be hazmat. In fact, the first thing we did when we started hearing about uh, increased uh, debris uh, on Montague and some of the places in Alaska is get out there with the Coast Guard to do surveys to find out if there's any hazmat in it. Uh, we, we're acutely aware of hazmat being an issue. It's a different kind of issue uh, if and when we have uh, hazardous materials debris come ashore. Did you see this ship coming? Did you see the ship behind me coming? Because it's a pretty large vessel. Yes. Did we see it coming? Yeah. Uh, the first time we saw it is a, on a, a commercially chartered uh, surveillance flight by the Canadians. Uh, we did not see it on satellites or any other uh, efforts that we had underway. That's the first we knew about it is when uh, this uh, commercial charter reported it to the Canadian authorities. And is, there something, is there something top secret about this information? Because is there, is there some reason why we can't? use all uh, satellite information? That, is, is there something that's stopping us from getting access to this? The, some of the discussions that we've been having recently are um, that imagery is available, but it, it's um, do, we, do we divert resources looking at um, things that are pretty important from security, national security issues, to do marine debris instead? It's kind of an either or discussion we've been having. I'm not, I don't know if it's an either-or discussion, but I guarantee you we will get to the bottom of it because we definitely believe that academics in the Northwest and perhaps throughout the country can help with better modeling. We've seen time and time again when NOAA has the information and resources, great modeling can happen. We have great modeling right now, for example, on tsunami response. If something happens with our Cascadia Fault, we, we can have information, we can have plans, we can get that to mm -hmm. the local community. So the notion that we... Uh, aren't getting, as uh, uh, Senator Begich said, a 
uh, high, moderate, and low estimation, and here are response plans to go with that so that we can adjust. What we're doing is we're getting caught off guard with this vessel showing up, various, as I said, thousands of cans of hazardous material showing up, and the notion that states are going to be left to respond is just not what we're going to do to protect our coastal community. So I, I thank you for your uh, your statement on this, and I'm sure we'll have more questions. I see my time is up, Mr. Chairman. If I could, just sure. one thing I wanted to make sure you were aware of, if you're not, that uh, the modeling that we're doing um, is not done in a vacuum. In fact, uh, University of Washington in particular uh, is at our table and working with us on models. Uh, we've been working with a number of academic communities throughout uh, the West Coast and uh, Hawaii, University of Hawaii model. Uh, so, and we are working with the local academic communities right now to try and make sure that we pick up their specific science, their models, their data, so that as this debris, and we can begin to identify it gets closer to shore, we're using their models, not just ours. So we're trying to engage them. Well, if, I, if I'm correct, and I'll find out, Mr. Chairman, I think we actually used the University of Washington, I mean, the University of Hawaii model at a previous hearing, not even the last one we had right. with Secretary Luchenko, but a previous uh, markup in the committee when we were trying to make sure that your marine debris program wasn't cut. And so the modeling that was used by the University of Hawaii showed a very, very large uh, field of debris, as someone said in their statement, uh, the size of one of our large western states approaching us. So that seems to be something that would be hard to miss. And so uh, hopefully we can get to the bottom of this about the data. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this is the chart that we had uh, gotten from the University of Hawaii and uh, shows the migration of millions of tons of tsunami trash, uh, basically making a trajectory right towards the west coast. And you can see by the size of the, mar the marine debris field that we're talking about um, large scale debris. So when you say NOAA's looking and you don't see anything and then you're working with partners, this is what your partners are coming up with. So I hope that after today we can uh, get the information, get it to these partners, and come up with, again, some assessments about really what we're doing. Because when our constituents see this, when they go online mm -hmm. and they see this, uh, they're very concerned. And so I think we have to, uh, which which brings up one, one very basic point, which is um, we have, uh, you know, we had wanted Mr. Chairman, one of our local communities, uh, mayors to be here, but I think because of the scheduling of a committee couldn't accommodate a second panel. So, uh, but one of the things is that um, they want to know, they want to, 911 operators want to know what to tell people when they're called about this marine debris. So when somebody calls and says, well, we see, you know, hazard, we see cans, we see personal belongings, we see styrofoam, mm -hmm. these local communities have said they've tried to get an answer from NOAA about what 911 operators are supposed to tell people. So what are 911 operators supposed to tell people? Um, I, I can't give you specifically what they're supposed to say, but that's been part of the discussion as we've worked on this issue uh, in, in most of the states. It's certainly part of the discussion that has been uh, in, in the uh, contingency plan development. So if we obviously need to educate people better, but uh, I think that's been part of... Uh, what has been covered. So uh, I, I can't give you the specifics, and we'll certainly get you something for the record and make sure it's... Uh, but, well, you know, I we're working with the local responders on, on this. And by the way, University of Hawaii is one of the consortium of modeling organizations that's working with us on the model that we are updating every two, day, two weeks. Uh, did we get one of these around to you folks? Okay. So uh, I don't think we have uh, uh, competing models. I, I think we have tried to make sure that we've gotten anybody that's uh, involved in this and has expertise at the table to develop this model, at least as a consultant. So, Well, Long Beach is a very beautiful part of our state, and, if you, and I wish we had a map of our state right now because you would see that it's the very exposed part on the coast mm -hmm. uh, of, our, of our state, a very large tourism area, and the fact that the mayor is trying to get answers is very important. I wanted to get to something else. I know we're out of time, Mr. Chairman, but... Um, one of our, uh, another aspect of this concern is obviously our migratory fish, the, the tuna, the salmon. Um, these are uh, 
great part of our ocean species that migrate, and oftentimes they migrate along these paths of debris. So what do you think the risks are there to our uh, uh, tuna and salmon populations? I think you've stumped me. I, I, uh, that's a, my fisheries colleagues uh, probably need to answer that question for you. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a little bit familiar with the issue. I've not heard it in the context of our deliberations on uh, the tsunami debris and, and what, what the potential or impacts are there. So, well, I think I, just with, I think just with um, what happened with Deepwater Horizon, people wanted the answers about what the impacts were going to be on those fisheries there. So, uh, again, uh, something that we hopefully will get an answer later for the record and we would appreciate it. Uh, again, we just want an assessment if that kind of debris field is going through and there are migratory patterns where these uh, species do follow um, these kind of debris fields, um, then what are some of the risks associated with it? So thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you all very much.